Hi, I'm Peter Birch and today we're going to be talking about Australian freshwater turtles. So let's check some of these pretty cool little guys out. Welcome to Critic Camp. Here we have the Eastern Long Neck Turtles, better known as Chelodina longicollis. Or the other common name that these guys have is called the Snake Neck Turtle. As you can see, they've got this really long, elongated neck, giving it that snake-like appearance. These guys are very, very common along the east coast of Australia. Very cool critters indeed. Here we have the Maclays River Turtle. These guys are situated just inside New South Wales, inhabiting the Maclays River and the Hastings River. They are a short neck turtle, so these guys are quite quick at swimming and moving through the water. And in fact, if you take a quick look at the face of this animal, you can see the beautiful yellow markings and the beautiful iridescent eyes. This is a female Maclays River Turtle. They can lay between 8 and 12 eggs, and they can double clutch, which means they can have two sets of eggs in a season, in a really good season. Time to let her go, so let's give her a kiss and let her go. See you later, girl. See how fast that was? Here we have the saw shell turtle. As you can see, look at its shell, it's got these nice jagged edges. Reminds them of a saw blade. Now these guys inhabit northern New South Wales and southeast Queensland. This week's question of the week. What is another name for a long neck turtle? Is it pipe neck, rope neck, or snake neck? Comment below and get your answer at the end of the show. Good luck. The turtles definitely look prehistoric to me. They've got this hard, bony shell on the outside. It's actually living bone covered with a thin layer of skin. Now, when you actually look at their skin, their skin itself is pretty incredible stuff. It's really thick and wrinkly. If anything, it might look a little bit like grandma, which is pretty cool. They have these very sharp claws. On the back legs, that's used for digging holes. On the front legs, that's used to tear their food apart. What we're going to do now is give this sucker a good kiss and let him go as well. See you later, buddy. What we have here is a nice little colony of animals. Inside this pond, there's a mixture of males and females. The ramp allows them to get up out of the water onto a nice area where they can dry out. But more importantly, they have this area right here, an area where they can lay eggs. And in fact, just by looking down here, it looks as though we might be on luck today, we might actually find some eggs right over here. The females come up into this area where they select to lay their eggs. They dig their burrows out using the back flippers, which is pretty incredible. They dig this nice little burrow, basically it's an egg chamber then they deposit their eggs into that chamber. Now depending on the species, it could be up to 8 to 12, sometimes up to 30 eggs that they deposit into this chamber. They will then use the same back flippers to fill in that hole. But more, more incredibly is the fact that they'll use their shell on the bottom of their body and lift their bodies up and drop it down, almost like a compaction device, compacting that egg chamber, making it nice and hard. So what we're going to do guys, is we're going to have a look now and we're going to dig up this nest and see what we're going to find. We have an incubator right here, and in fact it's just basically a warm water bath. The temperature of the water is about 29 degrees Celsius. The eggs are placed in these boxes on top of the tray, allowing the heat to come up and disperse through the boxes evenly. And in fact, when we have a close look, we can see eggs all through different types of development. We have some babies here hatching right now, and in fact we've got some eggs here that do the thing we call banding. Banding is where the eggshell oxidizes, allowing the embryo inside to be able to absorb oxygen through the shell. This is pretty cool guys, what we have here is some twinkies. Check out the size of that little fella right there. This week's question was, what is another name for a long neck turtle? If you guessed snake neck, 
You were 100% correct. Congratulations. These turtles here are about three weeks old. As you can see, the water level is really not that deep at all. That's because turtles need to think to breathe. And at this size, they're very forgetful, as you can imagine. Now, water quality is really important with baby turtles. That's the reason why it's recommended that you get a really good canister filter. And in fact, what we have here is limestone on the bottom of the tank. Now, limestone helps with pH levels and all sorts of things. But more importantly, if the turtle does ingest it, it can actually digest that. It'll pass through the system. It won't get stomach blockages at all. Now, the other very cool thing that we've got here is we've got a basking area and, very importantly, a UV light. It's about 10% UV light we've got on this one. And as you can see, they're all clustering in the back corner. Check that out. We're going to feed some baby turtles. Now what we have here is three different types of food groups. We have the bloodworms, we have cockroaches, and we have pellets. Now the bloodworms are good to get the baby starting to feed. And then after they're feeding very regularly on the pellets and the cockroaches, we can use that as an occasional food. Hope you've enjoyed today's show. These are really cool animals. Turtles are just absolutely amazing critters. In fact, let's say goodbye to this guy one more time. You're watching Critter Cam.